In this video, we're going to talk about things not to put in your will. Hi, I'm estate planning attorney Richard Barrett with Smith Barrett LLC and one half of the estate planning guys. Now, many of you have a will and you created it 10 years ago, 20 years ago. You haven't reviewed it and you're not even sure what's in it. And some of you just created a will last week or maybe last month. So I wanted to give you a few things if you haven't thought about it already that maybe shouldn't be in your will as opposed to what you've already done. You, you've already decided what should be. Let's talk about what should not be and why. The first is funeral arrangements, burial versus cremation, that kind of thing. It's not that that's not important. It is important, but typically what happens is someone passes away, the family scrambles to put a funeral together. I'm sure you visited at least one of those before. You can see there's a lot of work. It's almost like a wedding. You need music, flowers, invitations, who's flying in from out of town. So you take care of all that. You have a nice ceremony. You put the person in the ground thinking that's what they wanted. And then you look at the will a week later or two weeks later. No, no, it says dad wanted cremation instead of burial. So then you're left with, do we need to go through the process and can we? Will we be able to get a body exhumed so we can do it the way dad wanted it? In some situations that can be very difficult technically and legally, and it would always, I would think, be difficult from an emotional and a family dynamics perspective. So those wishes belong, your, your final wishes remain, should be in some sort of document you can give to your family and talk to them about ahead of time. A Georgia Advanced Directive provides a, a place to indicate that as well. So in the event your family's using that to take care of you, they will have at least seen that before you pass away. So that's another good place to put it. But generally, we don't want it in the will, or at least not only in the will. Another thing that goes along with, or people think of usually at the same time as they're thinking of final arrangements, is organ donation. If you wanna be an organ donor, that is fantastic. I'm personally an organ donor. There's a way to do that in most states by indicating it on your driver's license. You might put something in your advance directive for healthcare that says what you want or don't want in terms of body donation, organ donation. If you put that information only in your will, there are times when it would be the same problem we just talked about regarding funeral arrangements. It's that it's a very time sensitive thing, organ donation. And if your family's having to make that gut wrenching decision, and finally they do make that decision and they go a way that's opposite of what dad wanted, we're not gonna find that out till a week later or two weeks or three weeks. Whenever someone pulls out the will and thinks about probating it, that's when we find it out and that can be too late. The third thing is IRA or 401k or any retirement account beneficiary designation. All those kinds of retirement accounts have beneficiary designation forms you can fill out on paper or you can fill out online, but those are contractual obligations once you fill them out and the, the uh, life insurance company, if we're talking life insurance or the IRA or 401k custodian need to fo will follow and need to follow the designations you put on those beneficiary designation forms. So you can imagine what it would stir up in a family in terms of strife and difficulty if you put one thing on your beneficiary designation. When you started working 25 years ago, you put down a beneficiary designation of your wife and, and that was it, you left it at that. And then things went on and maybe you got divorced from the spouse and then you put in your will a different beneficiary designation but you never changed the form. It's the beneficiary designation form that's going to control. The only time the will is going to control that is if you've intentionally directed the, the funds from the IRA or the 401k directly to the estate. And there are lots of good tax related reasons not to do that. So we should be relying on the beneficiary designation form and not the will. Life support wishes. So we talked, I, I mentioned an advanced directive just a little while ago at the top of this video. What your wishes are for life support should be in an advanced directive for healthcare that you talk to your family about, especially the decision makers who you're appointing to carry out your wishes. Those are the people that are, can convey your wishes from what you've put down on paper to the doctors, nurses, the healthcare providers about what you want and what you don't want. If you put your life support wishes, either positive or negative in the will, there's a good chance no one's looking at that until you've already passed away. And the wrong decision may have been made in terms of wrong with regard to what you wanted because you put the information in your will instead of putting it in an advanced directive. Finally, trust assets. If you have a revocable living trust or another kind of trust, you need to know what kind of assets are in that trust because a lot of times all the will does intentionally in a trust-based plan is to take the assets that are not in the trust and put them in the trust. But if you made two separate documents at two separate times, at one point you made a, a trust, you put certain assets, your house, your savings, a car, an art collection, things like that in the trust, and then you put that up on the shelf and then you came back and said, how do you really need to update my will? And you talk to an attorney who's an order taker, they don't ask you all the right questions, they just say, you want a will? I'll make you a will. And all of a sudden we've got a conflict between the will and the trust and the people who are the beneficiaries 
under the will are going to be disappointed because trust assets are not part of the probate estate. They can't be directed by the will. So you want your will and your trust to be in harmony. And all of these things I'm hoping you're noting are they're technical issues, but they become very important real life issues for your family if you don't handle them correctly. After you pass away, it can be a real issue. So thanks for joining me today and listening to this. If you want to find out how we can help you and your family, please click the button below, click subscribe, click the, uh, click the share button, share it with someone you know and love who could use the help and click that little bell for reminders. So when we put new content up, you'll be, you'll, it'll let you know right away. Thanks for spending time with me. We'll see you next time.